HRN listeners. As we celebrate our 15th year, we are deepening our commitment to giving voice to the next generation of food system storytellers, and we need your help. Our internship and fellowship programs help activate new possibilities for underrepresented and underestimated young people through experiential journalism, audio engineering, and production training. Through these unique programs, HRN helps food equity stewards build essential workforce readiness skills that expand their potential and foster economic mobility. Please consider supporting these critical programs. And with a minimum donation, you can be entered to win a dinner for two at an amazing restaurant in one of eight cities and tickets to a concert at a great venue in one of those cities. We have incredible partners across the country who have donated as they also share our passion for helping to educate the next generation of food system storytellers. Check out heritageradionetwork.org 15 to donate and enter to win today. That's heritageradionetwork.org 15 to donate and enter to win today. And make sure you donate before March 31st. Thank you. Enjoy food the way nature intended. Alaska Seafood, wild, natural, and sustainable. For more information, visit wildalaskaseafood.com. I'm HRN's Executive Director, Katie Mosman-Wadler, jumping in to tell you about this week's episode of Meat and Three, Heritage Radio Network's weekly food roundup. This week, we're introducing you to some amazing women taking a stand. So often, being sexually harassed feels like a loss of control, and so I wanted to have these very tangible guides to say, here's what you can do. Others are pushing for more diversity at major food industry events. I still feel really determined to do, you know, whatever I can to help shift that and in a direction that's not just more diverse, but more equitable. We also have a report on that summer business staple, the lemonade stand. The lemonade stand might be the purest form of starting a business. Low overhead, easy to get into, and requires little experience or special equipment. Don't miss Meat and Three, your weekly 15-minute food news roundup from HRN. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app. Search M-E-A-T plus sign T-H-R-E-E. And thanks, as always, for listening. Hey, 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 welcome to Beer Sessions Radio on the Heritage Radio Network. I think I said, get your ass over here. We've got a full studio here today. Oops. It's uh, sometime in May 2018, and where this is the Chico and Friends Beer Travels, and uh, by way of Long Island, uh, BBD's is open in Las Vegas show. So there's a lot going on in this room. Let's go around and introduce everyone, because a lot of voices here, and a lot of different uh, beer people. So, Yvonne? Uh, Yvonne Pascarello, uh, Bell's Brewery, but I'm um, here as... Uh Noted friend of the DeChicos. <laughs> so the Chico's market up up in uh, markets in Westchester. So they're, they're a real big influence in terms of beer retailers in New York State, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, these guys are great. I always joke that they own uh, several high-end bodegas in Westchester. Uh, <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, these guys are amazing. Uh, they're also two of my best friends. Um Really amazing beer people. As the industry has changed over the years, these guys have always been kind of constant, um, super nice, always very welcoming to whatever brand or beer or whatever the heck they're bringing in. Um, That's a great great intro to yeah. the Chico Brothers. This other guy here, we got a guy from uh, Sloop Brewery, Joe Turco from Sloop Brewery, and uh, I, I you you know these guys well also. Yep, I got actually got into the beer industry because of uh, Chris. So I've known him 18 years now, and uh, he came up to me one day and said, there's a job at Union Beer. Do you want to get in the beer industry? I said, yeah, 100%. And I gained 70 pounds since then. So <laughs> it's good. All right. And they're laughing. So, and the brothers themselves, please introduce yourselves. Uh, cousins, please introduce yourselves. Yeah, cousins. Uh, they look like brothers, but. We do. Uh, I'm Chris DeChico, one of the owners of DeChico's uh, up in Westchester County. Seven locations and growing. And then Joe DeChico, I'm here. 
So I, I always get you guys mixed up, but you know, it's amazing that, so you guys are really like, like Yvonne said, you took the bodega model back in the eighties. <laughs> you could get in New York city. There'd be the big corner deli bodega says 400 beers. And, and it was like the start of the craft beer movement or the nineties, but you guys actually do it and do it well. Yeah. We, we started the, um, a real beer program started in the mid nineties. It's like 95, 96. We really got into it. So from there, it just grew, and you know we're like one of the first to do growlers, the first to put up a bar in a supermarket in New York State. Nobody was doing that stuff. We started pairing beers and cheeses in the 90s, which was pretty new back then. Hey, we Chris, how old pairings. were you when you started buying beer for the Chicos? 16. <laughs> 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 it's just email. I could legally buy it wholesale. I just can't sell it. You know? Note that for the record. Yeah. <laughs> Keep, Yvonne, keep asking. You know this guy so well. And, and ask Joe some questions. Come on. Oh. Joe, what is it that you actually do? Well, um, <clears throat> oh, geez. I, uh, well, a lot of tasting involved. Well, we do sell groceries also, so that's, that's a big part of our business, actually, believe it or not. So it's a supermarket. You sell a lot of beer, and you also in a couple of those, you have beer bars. Yeah. How many, how many bars do we have now? Uh, uh, five. So tell us, just tell us the locations, uh, where, where your stores are. You're mostly in Westchester County, New York? All, uh, six locations in Westchester County, one in Putnam. Uh, like Chris said, five of them have on full on-premise. Six of them, or, and, and in some sort of iteration of a growler station, something like that. So, so you can go in, sit down, and get a, a pint of beer while... A pint of beer, a growler, a crowler, buy beer at retail down the aisle. So, and all of them have, you know, thousand plus, you know, varieties of beer in each store. So it's, it's, it's cool. Cool, so Sounds like a good place to go shopping for groceries, right? It is. Uh, we're always being told that we save a lot of marriages. So husband or wife goes to the bar, the uh, spouse goes and shops, and uh, it's a very it's happy It's the highlight marriage. of the weekend. Yeah. yeah, it is. We do everything together on Saturdays. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. And other buddy, uh, another guy, we're talking about uh, moving out to Las Vegas. That's right. Uh, Mike Amade uh, with uh, BBD's uh, Las Vegas. Uh, we're opening in September in the uh, Palace Station Casino. Um it's going to be a, a bit of a change, but uh, looking forward to it. It's and Mike's fun. one of our great uh, beer bar operators in New York. He was with the Tourist a long time, and now he's joining with Ralph Parazzo, BBD's Long Island, and they're opening in Las Vegas. We've got a lot of things to talk about today. I think this is going to be one of those kind of open question shows. Uh, let's just start with the first beer that, that we're drinking that uh, you guys brought, Chris and Joe. And you guys are also very different. Uh, I've, I've had you on a show a couple of times, but I still can never quite remember who's Chris and who's Joe. <laughs> But tell us a little about yourself. So, Chris, you started ordering the beer when, when you were younger, working for your family's business. But you've also got uh, some chops. You've been to Belgium. You recently got, got an award, like a Belgian Knight Award. I was knighted by the Belgian Brewers Guild last year, uh, which is pretty cool. Only two retailers in New York State has ever gotten it. So uh, it was a pretty big honor. Really diminished the award, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Way to name it. Well. <laughs> and then what about you, Joe? You good? I know you're used to giving other people the attention, but you guys are, you know, we want to hear more about you. Yeah, so I'm, I'm Chris's double cousin, and I'm five so years. So your, your mother's, your siblings, well, tell us exactly how you guys are double cousins. Right, so our, our moms are sisters, and our dads are brothers. So we're, we're, in fact, double cousins, which, once you think about it, it's not that weird. It's perfect, which is why you perfectly look like, legal. It's perfectly you look like legal. brothers. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, exactly. So there's a lot of people, yeah, once you get to know us, I think that it's, it's easy to tell the difference, but... uh I'm actually I'm five years younger than Chris, and both grew up in the business. Chris started, so if Chris was 16, I was 11 when the beer was a thing. So I, I just kind of would always follow Chris's coattails and help him out and, and um, work with him. And then that's it. We, as we got older and then to 2006, we, me, Chris, and his brother, we got, uh, formed our own partnership, started up our, our own stores. And that's really when we expanded like crazy and added really cool stuff like the bars and that kind of stuff. So. And how do you guys approach like your buying of your beer? I mean, let's dive into beer retailing because it's a little different than... You know, what, what I know, what Mike know. Um, you know, what, what is beer retailing? I mean, is it about volume? How, how, do, you, how do you choose, like, the, the layers of... I mean, I saw a photo of, of Cantillon on one of your sites. I mean, are you selling Cantillon? Are you selling, you know, real specialty stuff? You have... Uh, the can you guys brought is, what, a collaboration? Or... Tell, yeah. us, tell us your whole beer program. I want to hear about no, that. No, I mean, it's... Because of we're doing full retail, we have everything. So, you know, from the Cantillons, we were one of, we were one of Cantillons' first retail customers in New York back in the late 90s. And um, we've been selling it ever since. But then, you know, we have things like what we're drinking right now. We do a lot of collaborations with local breweries. So this is a Newberg to Chico Weiss. Uh, our third version we do, we do a Berliner Weiss series. So this one is with uh, 
Hibiscus and White Tea, which is the newest one we did. So it's Newberg Brewing and the Chico, yeah. Chico Vice. So, it's good. Is, what do you think of it, Mike? It's really good. Yeah, yeah, Mike's like it good. Is it, uh, that's the one we're drinking here? Yeah, that's what we're drinking right now. Oh, wow. It's nice. Splendid. Yeah. It's good summer beer. Yeah, I was going to say I thought it was a sloop yeah. beer because Joe's here. I'm like, oh, you brought in a sloop. <laughs> Is Sloop ever make collaborations with the Chicos? Yeah, uh, we, we have, actually. We, yeah, and we're actually looking to do one this summer. So we're waiting for our new brewery to open and then get these guys in there and get something so going. I, so I met your founders when they were selling at the farmer's market in Beacon yep. years ago. And then I was up near Hudson a couple years ago, and there was a brewery on a farm. Mm-hmm. Yep, we're so, cur- currently in Elizaville, and uh, we're going to keep that spot. We're moving the 30-barrel brew house down to East Fishkill. And really just going from that barn to 26,000 square foot spot. And we're adding 12, 120 fermenters off the bat, canning lines. So we're going to start getting cans out for distribution. And all that's happening hopefully before July. So, yeah, uh, yeah we're waiting. And on so without, without these guys, you wouldn't have a job. Absolutely. No. <laughs> and now they're going to buy a lot of cans, which is good. So, so what, was it, what was it like? In, you know, you kind of started in the industry as they were growing up, too. Tell us some things about the Chico's, like what it represents to you, to the industry. You know, I mean, they're moving a lot of beer. They're doing a lot of great stuff in the city. I, I've never been there, guys. Yeah, I, I, I think it's like for me when I started, you know, I didn't know much about the industry. And I learned a lot from these guys and from their stores. You know, I was servicing the Ardsley location. And at the time, you know, that, that was the center point for beer. You know, everybody was going there. And some spots now have opened up around it. People still go to that spot. They have such a selection there. And I, I learned so much from them, their buyers, the way they hire is awesome. So you really, you know, it's an educational thing, um, you know, as you're, as you're progressing in your career. So how about this, uh, uh, Chris or Joe, how do you pick a bus? So you have a buyer per store or do you have buyers for the group? How does that work? Yeah. Every store has a beer manager and a beer team under them. So they all kind of do their own separate buying each location, you know, like, a, like, Bars are similar. You know, you have a different neighborhood, different taste, different clientele. So you have to really mold each store to what the customers like. So that definitely has a big impact. Um, definitely on the draft, what we're carrying on draft for to drink in store and growlers and whatnot. Uh, but also for the retail aspect of it as well. But you, you can take in any beer you want, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, we give them a lot of leeway on what they want to do. Yeah, it's, it's very flexible. And uh, like a... Uh, our guys are super passionate, and like we said, we since we're a conventional supermarket, we're still selling the macro stuff. And what the beer guys are, they're what they like to do, and we we want them to do is really upsell people, and you know, go go from your blue moons to your Allagash whites and stuff like that. So that's we're like down in the trenches trying to convert people. The guys are having fun. You could taste people right on the spot. So it's a really cool environment to to help like you know build the craft beer culture. That's why in our situation. Um we're really good at converting people, you know, from those macro beers, like Joe was saying. Because unlike a craft beer bar, you're going there for craft beer. You already know stuff. You're a craft beer for the most part. But you come to us, we get everybody. So, you know, you have the bud drinkers. You have the really high-end drinkers. You have soup drinkers. But we can convert these macro drinkers to craft. And, like, that's something we've been very proud of doing after all these years. Actually, I had a question, like, in terms of the specialty stuff. Like, how do you, like... On the very limited quantities of stuff, how do you, how do you end up doling out when you have such small quantities of certain things? How do you get those into the hands of the customers that are coming through? Because obviously, a lot of the beer nerds will want specific things, but if you only have a limited supply, how do you how do you get it in the hands of the right people? I guess it, it's not easy. It really isn't. Um, <laughs> we've tried different things over the years. We'll try to like save stuff for really good customers, but then you wind up pissing people off no matter what you do. <laughs> Uh, Make so, friends with the reps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for but do you sure. Just that get like, helps, you but, get like one case per store of some things, or that's just... I mean, yeah, that could definitely happen. You know, something like a Cantillon, you could get six bottles, you know, so it's it's very tough. We almost follow like that that kind of, you know, like that liquor store, wine store model where it's like you, you go, you get to know your beer buyer because he's there all the time. You know, it's not a part-time kid. He's it's he's going to be there. He or she'll be there all the time. You get to know them. You're going there weekly, and they and they, they learn, they get to know their customers, and yeah, they might they might save a bottle of Cantillon on the side for when you know so and so comes in the next time, and so it's it's still it's a cool it's a cool little um little business thing yeah. going on. But I mean, we've gotten to the point now where it's just there's so much beer coming out that we'll just like throw it up on Facebook, or Instagram, like hey, this just landed, come and get it, first come first serve now because it's just it's amazing how much it's good like beer Black there Friday is. at Walmart. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> can't believe I said that. And uh, wait, you're gonna Joe say it, and then I'm gonna ask him about this beer. So. 
Go, Joe. Oh, no, I get that. You sure you're going to say something? No. That, that, that. <laughs> Joe Turco. Don't be shy, Joe. Come on. Come on. We all want to hear I it. I know you wanted to say something. No, Your no, profundity. No. All right. You guys are great. Thanks for coming in. Well, you're enjoying our Sloop Jam. Uh, this is a series we started. Basically, every name is based off the old NBA Jam arcade game. So, uh, from the, what, you know, what the... Wait, Mike, do you know that game? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I have, seen, I have seen or heard of it. <laughs> nice. So yeah, this is the this is the first run. Yvonne, of it. Do you know that game? Yeah, I used to play with uh, Sean Kemp, Seattle <laughs> Supersonics. Perfect. I was a penny guy with the Magic, but this is um, this is the first part of a seven beer series, and it's called Razzle Dazzle, uh, and it it. it Came out probably almost a Sloop month ago. Razzle Dazzle. Sloop Razzle Dazzle. Uh, lactose sour, uh, tart cherries, raspberries. Really, just really fun, nice beer. Uh, this we released this beer tasty room only. We don't can for distro right now, but the draft has been such a huge success, and we had again a limited amount, and it and it flew. But everybody's pretty excited. We're doing um, the second beer is being canned Thursday and keg Friday, and that's Boom Shakalaka. And that's gonna have blueberries in it. That's a that's a different take. You on guys it. have a canning line, or, or do you get the mobile canners? In? Yeah, so we have a canning line, an old school one, and basically it's uh, four guys, eight cans per minute. <laughs> um, and no, uh, bag, the yeah, new yeah. one's going eighty five cans per minute. So it's, <laughs> it's gonna be a jump in in the whole process. But yeah, right now it's all hands on deck when you can. So it's pretty fun though. You have a lot of laughs when you're doing it. That's fun. We're off to a great start. We'll be back in a few minutes on Beer Sessions Radio. All right. Good start, guys. Think about what it takes to swim a coastline longer than the entire eastern seaboard and leap tall waterfalls in a single bound. What does it take to survive 200 feet deep in icy salt water? What would you be made of? Wild Alaska seafood is made of tight muscle mass, long chain omega-3s, and incredible micronutrients. It matters where your food comes from. Experience the flavor of the fittest in every bite and enjoy food the way nature intended. Alaska seafood, wild, natural, and sustainable. Ask for Alaska on the menu, grocery store, or smart device. For more information, visit wildalaskaseafood.com. Hey, 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 welcome back to Beer Sessions Radio on the Heritage Radio Network. Hey, uh, we got the DeChico Brothers, some of the big beer retailers up in Westchester County, New York. Uh, Joe Turco from Sloop, Yvonne from uh, Bell's Brewing, and Mike Amaday, who's uh, moved moving out to Las Vegas to work on BBD's Las Vegas. Mike. So um, you and Ralph Parazzo. Ralph, are you on the line? What's going on, Jimmy? Hey, buddy. So he, this Ralph's on the phone. It's a little delay, listeners, but uh, really proud of you, man. Um, you know, you've been a big advocate for good food and, and craft beer a long time. Why don't you just tell us, you know, what, what got you to open a place in Las Vegas and, and what you're going through right now? Well, pretty much, you know, I, I lived here for like five years before I moved back to New York open up BBDs, and um, my first uh, crack into craft beer was here in Las Vegas, actually. So uh, when I was younger, it's what got me drinking craft beer, and, um, you know, I've always said I wanted to come back to this city. It's like a second home to me, and, uh, you know, I always said I'm only going to come back if it's on my terms, so I'm I'm pretty excited to be opening. That's great, man. And Mike, uh, so you got Mike from, who worked at Taurus a long time. Uh, you're putting together a good team out there. Tell us more about the scene in Las Vegas. There, there, there are not really that many craft beer bars. Yeah, the uh, uh, you know, craft beer bars the, the are, uh, here is, I would is, say, underrepresented you know, uh, in Las Vegas. good craft beer brands. Um, uh, but, you know, there's not really the people taking it the extra mile with the draft system and cleaning of lines and quality pour and all the things we do in New York that we, we hold close to our heart. Um, so, you know, me and Mike are really looking forward to you know, bringing it to the next level in this city and, and bringing out a lot of our local brewery friends from New York and Vermont and Florida, from the East Coast pretty much, and giving them some exposure out here on a major playing field. So, Ralph, so state to state, are you able to, to easily bring in out-of-state beers in uh, Nevada? Tell us about that process, because I know you've always done a great job of having out-of-state guests come in and do special beers with you. 
Yeah, no, you know, I uh, I opened up, my eyes got opened uh, when I did the McKellar Beer Fest. We cooked there last summer in Boston, and uh, I was with a bunch of brewers, and I said, "Hey, why does Mikkel like do this in Boston, not New York?" And all the brewers from like Sweden and you know all different parts of the the world were like, "You know what, man? Like, it's just easier here with the liquor laws and stuff to bring our kegs over." So when they explained it to me, I says, "Wow, I wonder if Vegas is like that." So the you know, because I knew I was working on a deal out here, and um, when I reached out to my liquor license lawyer out here, he, he basically broke it down for me how it's like a two-day registration. Now, Mike, a tourist, myself, we brought in a lot of breweries and spread the wealth across the community in Brooklyn and the five boroughs with sharing beer with from our friends, and it's like a two-month registration process. You know, it's a whole, whole, you know, it's not easy. You know, here, um, for example, you know, we I did a charity event with Mike a couple weeks ago and, and I call I called up the guys from Barrier and they gave me a couple cases of money cans and it took a, it took literally probably three days to get the beer registered and you know, I had a shipment of meat and stuff going to Vegas that was on a cold truck, so we were able to throw the beer on there. I never touched, you know, warm temperatures and uh, we were able to you know, serve a quality IPA from, from New York, um, you know, that never saw a different temperature and and was totally legal. Um, and people really dug it, you know. So that was another reason why I decided to sign on here, because I think we can make a huge impact with bringing in our friends that are small in New York that would love, you know, some, to get some more revenue for their breweries and and uh, get 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 the word out on what the East Coast is doing, you know. The other cool side to that is that uh, it's always a temporary arrangement as well, whereas in New York you might be locked in to the distributor you'd be using not knowing if they're going to be a good fit for you before getting in bed with them or not. Uh, so with this arrangement, it's you know it's a, a quick sign up, it's a two day turnaround uh, for uh, to get the thing registered, and you're working on a temporary basement ba- a basis with a distributor who you can then get to know, and then if you like them, you can uh, set something up more permanent uh, or not. Just pretty cool. You know, I've never been to Las Vegas, Ralph. You know, everyone, all our brewer friends are just stoked. Because now they got a reason to come to Vegas. <laughs> and I knew you would answer you know, like, that question. Do a beer event and fly out to Vegas for the weekend. So it's, I think it's going to be very well perceived. That's great, Ralph. I'm, I'm going to actually ask you ask you to stay on. Uh, there's a little delay, so we're going to keep the conversation going here. Just listen in, okay? Okay. And if we get a chance, we'll get you to jump in. We got uh, the Chico brothers, who are premier beer retailers here in New York, and uh, in New York, Yvonne from Bell's and Joe from Sloop along with Mike. So we're going to keep the conversation going. Stay on, and we'll get back to you, okay? Okay. All right, so I wanted to ask you, Vaughn, um, you know, you've, you've, you're here with the DeChico and Friends. We're talking about beer retailers in New York State. Um, you know, tell us some more about, about these guys, what they're doing, you know. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I have a very uh, tight relationship with these two. Um, and then uh, possibly the Holy Land, too. Yeah, is that sure. what it is? So you're, you're drinking beers that, let's just jump in, that you know, you guys get through the Chicos and 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 we get here in New York. But Mike, are, are any of these beers things you could just have flown out to Vegas? Uh, well, uh, the Holy Mountain stuff. Obviously, they're they're um, they're in Seattle, so um, I don't know if they are actually available in Las Vegas yet or not. But I'm going to be finding out because I'm a huge fan of their beers. Uh, so uh, yeah, we'll, we're going to hope to get them to Las Vegas if they're not yet, there yet or not. Um, and like the uh, well, Dre Fontana is, is is out there. I'm sure, um, probably in small amounts because there's not a lot of uh, places that are really kind of highlighting um, uh, great craft beer yet. Um, so I'm sure that, uh, that it's limited by that. Um, but yeah, that's that's really the cool thing about about Vegas is like, well, if there's not if there's not the representation locally, we 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 hope to be able to just reach out and uh, and invite them in. So like Chris, I know I, you're a, a knight of there's the Golden Knights in Las Vegas, right, Yvonne? <laughs> the hockey Knights, team. Baby. But uh, Chris Tachico is a what is, what is your official title? You're a Belgian Belgian something? Brewers Knight of the yeah the Belgian, Belgian Brewers Guild. So there's a chance that you 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 have Cantillon releases at some of your stores yeah right? yeah absolutely uh we have a very large belgium portfolio that we uh do and i mean at our bars we have lambic and goose menus trappist menus you know just pushing the belgian beers for sure which unfortunately a lot of outside of the 
lambics people are starting to forget about in this country. Not that they're forgetting, but like, you know, we love the local guys like Sloop, but you know, we, we love to appreciate some of the beers that were the foundation of the beer industry and the craft beer movement. Classics, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're, we're definitely going to be trying to highlight some classics uh, out in Las Vegas as well. Maybe you guys will have Canty on in Las Vegas. Uh, fingers crossed. I fingers hope so. Crossed. Yeah. I had a question about uh, being a Belgian knight. Do you, uh, is there a secret handshake that you and Chris Lively will uh, will engage in when you see one another at a festivals and things? I mean, I get asked that a lot, but I really don't think I should say. <laughs> <laughs> but if you knew, Mike, you wouldn't have to ask. <laughs> <laughs> but Chris, so what, what are the foundations? So like, let's say I'm opening a, a new beer bar or a store. What are some Belgian beers that, that I should have on my list? Um, Whether I'm in Nevada or New York? No, or... I mean, there's a wide variety of styles when it comes to Belgian beer. So I think really going across the broad, get, getting the Goose, the Lambics, some of the Trappists, the Doubles, the Quads, you know, that's very important for sure. So um, I think you've got you to fill the spectrum out for it. Those and those those beers in particular are such a such a great foundation for people that are just getting into craft beer. Like I think that seems like back in the day that was sort of the way it happened. Like you 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 really got your start sort of in Belgium. You exactly. eventually found yourself in Belgian beer territory and explored that space, and then figured the rest out. Exactly for for all, I mean for me at least, and I know a lot of people that are you know more my age. That was the gateway into craft beer was the imports, the Belgians, the Sam Smiths from England. You know, like those were the beers that got us into this. Today it's a little different, and I'll talk to these beer customers, and they never had some of these beers. They never had Orval, which is, like, no, mind-blowing. That always <laughs> amazes me, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, like, at Torch especially, that I am, and going to follow suit in Las Vegas, of course. Uh, that was a beer we always had on. So, like, if you, in the course of conversation, if you could talk to one of these guys that either are on the path to, like, learning about beer, or even if they've been in it for a while and they've never had Orval, like... Put the list down. We need to get an Orval in front of you right now. You know, you need that's like you have to have that background. Definitely. Back to, back to Yvonne. <laughs> so, dealing with these guys, you've been, you're big fans of them. You're part of the Chico and Friends here, Bell's Brewery. I remember when <laughs> Bell's rolled out, talk about more just local beer culture. When you guys rolled out in New York City, it was like the best beer week ever. Larry Bell came out. Yeah, it was awesome. Events were everywhere. I didn't sleep for two weeks. <laughs> it was rad. I did 82 <laughs> events in 14 days. It was pretty intense. Uh, we didn't uh, we didn't expect to receive the uh, the love that we got from New York, and it's actually turned into one of our, our best markets. Um, and a lot of that has to do with these two over here, and actually this guy. <clears throat> so actually, I want to ask like, let's you know, you're you're a, a sales rep, sales manager. Sure. Yeah. How do you interact with this group, to Chicos? Are you, are you doing? Like so you said, I did a little buyer bit, to little buyer. Bit. You're doing the whole group. No, I mean I did a little bit non traditional. Um, years ago, I started. I started working on the craft side about ten years ago. Um, I started at Manhattan Beer fifteen years ago, and then uh, I was selling cores and stuff like that. And then ten years ago, I started working in craft, and I did uh, not your typical way to get to be professional with a with a buyer. I just started drinking with these guys and hanging out with them all the time and showing up to soccer games and. Uh, through that, they've helped me along in my career. Um, so I guess I don't really have good advice as to how to approach a <laughs> Chico store other than, I don't know, go to Brazil with Chris and drink a lot of beer with him and watch some World Cup games. I don't think a lot of people so you need a to travel budget. Yeah. So it sounds like you're yeah. going to be in Las Vegas soon, everybody. <laughs> We're all going to Vegas. Yeah. You're going to start doing your Canteon tastings and uh, BBDs in Las Vegas. For sure. Sorry, right, open invitation. <laughs> awesome, I'm in. And Joe, you, what about you? Just so, but yeah, I'm, I'm interested in this because there's beer bars in each store. I mean, maybe for other people this is pedestrian, but for me it's interesting. Like, you know, New York City beer bars are their own kind of culture. You know, you're, you're dealing with a, 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 a group of, of stores. You know, how do you interact with each store, different buyers? Well, I, I had mean, the luxury of really dealing with them on multiple levels. I deal with dealt with them at distribution. I dealt with them when I worked at Bell's Brewery. I'm dealing with them now. So getting that sort of that mo- amazing family and amazing company, Bell's, like that num- you know, that top craft brewery in the country, and then going to selling a small Hudson Valley brewery. Top and independent. Independent. <laughs> <laughs> and then going, you know, and dealing on the distribution side, there's so many different levels I've got to work with these guys on. And I think the approach is really... For me, it was easy because I was friends with them. So if they didn't buy anything, I would just yell at them and be like, all right, then we're not going to hang out. And everybody wants to hang out with me. So I, you know, I said then. It's a proven sales they, tactic. They started buying. No, but, you know, I think it's this industry is so important. It's relationships. And I think, you know, having that relationship with your account 
you know, Avon and I are probably a little bit closer <laughs> than other people with these guys. <laughs> but, you know, I think it does help and it goes a long way. And then they build trust with you. Yeah, so, it's, you know. it's, it's interesting because, like, the industry has changed a lot. And, you know, especially from, from the supplier side, Joe and I have been in it longer than most people in the business right now. And watching the dynamic shift and, and the industry shift, uh, it's, it's a lot of people that have come in fairly recently and think they know more than anything you've ever known. And these guys have forgotten more than most people in the industry could ever hope to learn. And the fact that they're even keel and awesome dudes, trustworthy, great business guys, um, and you know, great to have a pint with, uh, that goes a long way. And, and a lot of people that do buying and own stores and stuff could look to these two to, to see how it's done. Because they, they do it the right way. So you guys, the way you buy, I want to talk about that, Joe. How you buy, whether it's groceries or beer, you know, you have a lot of relationships. I mean, then you're saying no to a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's uh, to be honest, it's it's easy to do what we do. It's, you know, craft beer is booming. It's popular. It's it's trendy. So it's easy to sell beer now. Honestly, we put it on the shelf. A lot of these brands sell themselves. Fifteen but years ago, that wasn't the case. Was, it wasn't the case, uh, and it was a lot of just going out, and we were just you know two brand new guys to the industry. It, the industry was just forming, so it was going out. We would come to this, you know, take the train down to the city and go to a cool event and meet people and just hang out. And you you fostered these relationships from literally the ground up, and everybody was on the same team. And you know, some of the beers were good back then, some of them were bad, but we were all friends, and it was like this band of kind of silly misfits. And that's you know that's how we hooked up with Avon, and eventually Turco came in. Um, so now, I mean, we're lucky that, you know, our, our friends that we've made over the years, they were, you know, we're thankful that they work for great brands and great breweries. So it's, it's even easier to, to support them and sell their product. We would support them regardless of what, you know, what kind of beer they made or sold. But that's besides the point. But um, so, yeah, I mean, we sell we sell the brands that sell. and We sell the brands that we like to Chris said, the classic Belgians, what we want to sell um, and the brands that sell themselves. So it's a, it's a combo of all those things. It is getting harder now, though, with the amount of brands, the breweries that are opening, the amount of SKUs. It's getting a lot more complicated. We always, as far as a supermarket, we always had a much larger section than anyone else. So it was never really an issue. It was like, all right, cool, new beer, we're taking it, you know. But now it's, it can't just be good. It it can't just be local. It just can't be a new beer. It's it's got to be good. It's you know it's it's changed a lot with the amount of variety that's out there. That's awesome. Great. So, and what's the Holy Mountain beer we're drinking? Who brought it? Uh, I, Mike brought it. Yeah, yeah. We did an event with these guys uh, when they first came out, uh, maybe a year and a half ago, maybe somewhere in that that uh, in that scope. Uh, and this is a uh, just a, a grisette. So uh, low ABV, holy mountain, f- lightly tart, kind of funky. Great. Yeah. All right, guys, we'll take one more break. We'll be back in a few minutes on Beer Sessions Radio. All right, stay with us, Ralph. Like what you hear? Heritage Radio Network has plenty more. With fresh programming every week, we've got something for everyone. Trying to start your own food business? Concerned about where your food comes from? Looking for the best wine or beer to bring to a party? Find our shows on iTunes or Stitcher, or head to heritageradionetwork.org to listen live and subscribe to our newsletter. Hey, welcome back to Beer Sessions Radio on the Heritage Radio Network. Hey, check out heritageradionetwork.org. There's a new new show called Meet in Three, and I think they took a clip from our uh, Bushwick Nightlife show. You had City Council member Rafa Espinal talking about uh, the new nightlife mayor and reform of cabaret license uh, with Brandon Hoy of Burners. That was a great show. I'm really proud that that made it to the Meet in Three uh, cut. So let's check that out. Meet in Three, it's a new show on Heritage Radio Network. So we're back here to Chico's and Friends. Uh, one more time, everyone say their name and introduce themselves, because this is a great crew here. Uh, Yvonne Pascarello, Bell's Brewery. Joe Turco, Sloop Brewery. Uh, Chris DeChico of DeChico's. Joe DeChico of DeChico's. Mike Amade with BBD's Las Vegas. So, Yvonne, you have some, some crazy stuff to say about these boys? It's <laughs> oh. the DeChico Roast. You really time. wanted me to go into that, huh? <laughs> I do, man. Uh, You're just holding back. So, scared. Chris is uh, awesome to travel with, and uh, once... Uh, harangued an entire bar of English football hooligans. Um, 
on and saying Yankee Doodle Dandy to them derisively. One of my fo- favorite Chris DiCicco moments of all time. It was with, after uh, they lost we, the World it was Cup during the World Cup. With what era li- uh, lyrics from the? <laughs> I think Revolutionary, Revolutionary War. Probably yeah. yeah if I had a fife and drum, I would have been there. But instead, I picked him up out of the bar. We walked in the street. Wow. It was the last night of I don't let us go out at night. <laughs> The soccer, then, ga- the, the soccer games are pretty crazy, and we've we've traveled around and, and gone to different states for them. And uh, Chris ate raw chicken off a shopping cart that yep. they were cooking at what Panama, USA, and mm-hmm. that was an experience. Um, <laughs> he'll eat anything, and then he has a few beers. He's been known to have a few beers during the game, so well, that's it's really Chris. fun. And what about Joe? Joe is just the sweet, sweet chaperone of all of us. Great he's upper body strength. The, the, the youngest, say. but the most Thank responsible. You. you have to put in the line. He's okay. talking. Somebody's talking. Ralph's still on the line. This is a crazy show. We're sitting Sorry, here. guys. Keep going, Ralph. Don't worry. We're drinking some beers you, you wish you had. So, uh, Chris, you brought this in. What, Trey Fontaine in? Yeah, this is the uh, Trey Fontaine in homage, which is um, a blend that they, you do with raspberries and cherries. So it's kind of unique because it's usually just a frambois or a creek. This is, they blend it both together. And it's uh, delicious. <laughs> okay, this is the question, the Chico question. So I asked you about how, you know, how people can sell to you. You have to said no to people. Um, how did you guys go about, it's a family business, you know, opening the first bar in a supermarket? What did you have to, who did you have to ask permission of? How, how did you prove yourselves? Um, yeah, okay. So the first bar, when I said I wanted to put a bar in a supermarket, everybody thought I was insane. Uh, it's basically never been done before. So what we had to do was we had to go to the SLA. We met with the head of the SLA and um, pretty much proposed what we wanted to do. We were looking at the laws. and We're like, according to the law, I think we could do this. So they went back to us and they're like, you're kind of right. There is nothing that says you can't do it. They're like, all right, if we're going to do this, we want to make sure we do it right. So it took a long time. We went through everything with them, went through the laws. And here we are today now with six of them. So short version, they made him an offer they couldn't refuse being the DeChicos. So. <laughs> yeah, but so what did you have to do to make it? You have to have, just tell us, how do you have a bar in a supermarket? Yeah, there, I mean, there was a license out there that provided for it. So it was just a matter of... What's, what's the license? Uh, a wine and tavern license, which is technically the license. Um, it, it's, it's a license where you could be a bar, you can't sell liquor, you could sell beer and wine, but you could sell beer to go as well. So we kind of utilize that. The entire store from the SLA is a giant bar. So I could walk around with a pint. Legally, yes, you can, but they asked us not to do that. Yeah. <laughs> and then what, oh, you, have, I stop you have doing bathrooms that? also? I know you have to have bathrooms. Yeah, absolutely. You have bathrooms. You have all that. Each register, so like some stores have like 12 registers. Each one, according to the SLA, is a bar. So each one needs its own license. So it gets a little confusing, and it, it kind of gets expensive because you need another But do I actually license. sit at a bar... And I can order a pint? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I, do, I don't course. have to go to the register to get it. No, 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 no. The bar area has its own bar, but according to the SLA, the entire store is a bar. So in that's their, their eyes. perk that you're paying for more bars. You and for pay, you yeah, beer reps see. out there, the bathrooms at all the DeChicos are all very clean. <laughs> and also, for you beer reps, bring cash because you cannot tip on your credit card to the bartenders. I don't tip anyway. Me neither. I've seen that happen more and more <laughs> places, Joe. Good, good point. Mm-hmm. I'm For us, it's because we actually run off our POS supermarket system. So if we put a tip line on there, it's going to go on to every single register. It's going to be a tip line. So when you buy groceries, having a tip line would be kind of silly, and people would think that's weird. So well, That's the other thing I want to know about is the grocery business. I mean, you know, groceries sell a lot of beer. I mean, do you guys do delivery, takeout? I know that of beer, I know that there's some, some uh, retailers that are selling to offices, to kegerators. Mike and I were talking about that before. Is that a big part of your business, too? You don't want to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, no, we do a lot of delivery, for sure. Um, yeah, we do kegs as well. Um, it, it's, a, it's not a huge part of our business. A lot of it is more for barbecues and whatnot, people having parties. We do a lot of catering, so a lot of kegs for that. That's definitely a big part of it. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't really picked the lock on delivering beer specifically so that's something that's gone up it's that's like a touchy kind of gray area for us right now so would you ever open a standalone beer place or are you always going to be uh no it's definitely it's definitely come up before and i wouldn't be surprised if it happens one day um you know certain locations in the hudson valley there's these great little towns on the river which having a full de chico supermarket they just can't support it so doing a smaller concept with mainly beer and maybe some nice things to 
kind of complement the beer. So you're finally going to open a, bo- a bodega like I've been saying. <laughs> we're going back all the time. We're reversing. Yes. Nirvana wants a bodega. We're, we're going to open a bodega. I'll, I'll be slicing cold cuts. Oh, oh the cold cuts. <laughs> it's a living. Now that sounds like fun. You guys got a lot of potential. Let's go back to Las Vegas. So Mike and I know Ralph, you're, Ralph's still on, right? I'm here. Mike, t- take us through anything you want to say or ask Ralph about what's going on in Las Vegas. <laughs> We've been in touch. Um, yeah, we're, yeah we're, we're really excited to get going in Las Vegas. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting place on the, on the beer front uh, because they seem, at least coming from New York, they seem to be a little bit behind where we are right now. You know, like everybody throughout the country is in a different place on this sort of uh, craft beer arc, I guess. But uh, uh, so we're excited to get going there and uh, kind of uh, get in touch with all the, you know, there's two million people in Vegas. I hadn't been there. Uh, since I was a kid, so I was surprised to find all this stuff recently about Las Vegas. But there's too many people there. It's a big city now, big spread out city. Um, and when you have that many people in one place, there's going to be some beer nerds. So uh, we're looking to to make those people happy when we open in September. That's great. And Ralph, I didn't know that you had you had cooked in Las Vegas. I didn't know you had a background. Um, tell us more about the the culinary scene out there. Uh, the culinary scene off strip is just booming. Uh, when I when I eat in Las Vegas, I eat off strip, and I think some of the best Asian food is in Las Vegas. Uh, it's a big statement, uh, but uh, you know I, that's why I, I was excited to come back. Is the the, the where we're going to be located is going to be off strip, but we're still in a casino. But the the restaurant is in front of the casino, so people don't have to walk through it. So a lot of the restaurants here on the strip, you know, you got to go through valet and walk three different floors and escalate. It takes forever just to get to the restaurant. Here, they can pull into the parking lot, get out of the car, and walk in just like in, just like in the city. So, um, you know, the the food scene is 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 really really uh, starting to take off. You know, Food and Wine wrote a whole article on this event that we did here uh, with twelve great chefs locally, um, and they're all good friends of mine. They're all doing like real true artisan food. Uh, from scratch, and uh, it's just a perfect time for me to be here and bring the brand. What What's the famous oyster bar that's right near where you're opening? <laughs> it's called the Oyster Bar. It's been there for uh, 30, 20, 30 years. It's a 24-hour, 12-seat bar that uh, always has a line, and they pretty much make, like, Louisiana Creole kind of hot pots, as I call them, in these cool little vats. So, like, you sit there and you order your gumbo or your, um, what do they call it, Mike? What was the name of it? Uh, pan roast. Pan roast. Or, uh, thank you. Pan roast with, with, like, crab and shrimp and andouille sausage and uh, all kinds of spices. And the chef literally makes it right in front of you, boils it down, dumps it in a bowl, gives you a side of rice, you know, with a great... You know, cold beer. <laughs> and, uh, 24 hours. It's, 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 it's great. I mean, they do some great numbers there, too. It's the highest grossing restaurant in the whole company, actually. Can I ask you a Vegas question? Sure. Uh, hi, this That's is... That's Yvonne from Bell's. Can I, at your guy's restaurant, can I get, like, a really awesome beer and go out and hit the tables? Is that possible? Yeah. Can I drink craft beer at a table? Absolutely. Yeah, the only thing is, is me and Mike set this thing up, so to walk through BBDs, you got to go through, like, a cool, weird art gallery that leads to, like, a butcher room, and then the door opens to the restaurant, so anyone that went to leave the restaurant, we have custom glassware, obviously, and uh, we'd have to dump it in some plastic cup for you, but you're more than welcome to. Awesome. <laughs> oh, you mean you can actually walk outside? Or just yeah, no, no, I want to gamble. Walk. I want to gamble. Literally, the beer. casino That's floor is in fr- the front door of the restaurant, so it's great. So you can just walk in, eat, get beers, and then just like walk out, and there, there are the tables right in front of the restaurant. You might have to listen to a little bit of heavy metal on the way in and out, but uh, other than that, yeah. <laughs> so Rob, you're, you're also doing a, a, your own butcher room too. Yeah, you know, I mean, when I when I applied for everything here in Vegas, it's different than New York. You know, like they were kind of dumbfounded how we go from from whole animal to our product, you know, so they were kind of like, you know, you're going to, how are you bringing in all the steer from New York and, and pigs and everything. And, and we, they wanted me to build a cold room, which I was totally fine with. Um, cause you know, we make our own sausages and everything. So, but in New York, it's not required. So, uh, so yeah, I said, screw it. If we're going to build this awesome butcher room, let's, let's expose it to the dining room and have this badass meat rail with all our beef hanging and our pigs and, ducks and everything and showcase the craftsmanship just like we do the beer 
And Mike, anything you want to say? I mean, you're, you're moving from New York to Las Vegas to work with Ralph, so you must be excited about what's going on. Absolutely, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm psyched to kind of uh, explore that part of the country. I've never really uh, spent too much time out there, so getting to learn a little bit about the city. Uh, turns out there's a hockey team out there <laughs> <laughs> who are apparently doing pretty well. Um, yeah, so it's just an area I haven't uh, spent a lot of time with, and it's kind of exciting to kind of learn, uh, even on the beer front, to kind of le- go to a new area, check out the scene, like see see w- what types of beers eat the, the local breweries are making. Um, uh, you know, and then obviously the connection is there uh, to the the West Coast brands too. So a lot of great beer uh, that we'll be able to ha- that we have access to there that we don't typically get out here as well. Um, and it's all close proximity as well. So there'll be a lot of trips to to you know Oregon and California, California. and all that stuff. So yeah, looking forward to all that for sure. And then di- state to state. So in New York, we know that what there's independent wine stores that s- sell wine and liquor, and then great supermarkets like the Chicos that can sell craft beer. Uh, where can you buy craft beer in, in uh, Nevada? Uh, you can definitely there. You can get them at uh, uh, package stores. So yeah, they have liquor stores with beer and wine. Uh, I'm uh, actually not sure if you can get it in the uh, grocery stores. I haven't set foot in a grocery store yet. But, yeah, uh, I would say basically Whole Foods, your big food and wine stores. Um, it's kind of funny because there's a there's a big uh, influx of Firestone barrel aged stuff like. I would I would come here. I was telling Mike I, I'd buy like my parabolas and my, you know the big beer stuff from Firestone that like you only get like a couple of cases to New York and it's it goes between all the best beer bars. But out here for some reason, they get a great uh, amount of Firestone as far as like their high end stuff. Um, but uh, there's a couple of beer shops stores. Uh, they're super small. Uh, there's like a little community of it, like where people trade and stuff. Um, you know, when Mike gets back out here, we'll, we'll go make FaceTime with them. Uh, but I went. To, I just recently went to like a beer trade, and like I brought a bunch of OEC bottles, and they, everyone just kind of looked at me like, "Who's the dude that brought the wine?" You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know. So I think I think there's also like uh, an education that has to be done as well out here with as far as like focus beer. You know, any barrel aged you know beer that's you know sour or, or or anything of that nature doesn't seem to be popular as much out here but of course your double IPAs and your um, beers of that nature are are very well perceived so I, I think I think there's there's still a lot of room for um, beer stores and bottle shops to be opening here in Las Vegas great thanks Ralph um, we're gonna come back to the group so guys uh, the Chico's any special events coming up it's gonna be June soon uh, yeah, what do we got? Um, this Thursday is our Collaborate and Listen event. So we're doing all collaboration beers Thursday in Armok, which is pretty cool. So it turns out to be in like 28 different breweries involved in all these collaboration beers. And then uh, we got a big Armok 5th anniversary party on the 15th, which would be pretty awesome. A lot of great beers coming in for that. Sounds cool, right, Joe? <laughs> it's great having you guys together. And Yvonne, you want to speak for the for the cousins? Anything that, that we should know about Dechico's? <laughs> Nothing that I can say on the radio. <laughs> Nothing that I can say on the radio. All right, thank you, Joe Turco. He's the guy. They're great people, uh, right. and yeah, you know, uh, looking forward to that collab event. All right, tomorrow. so Mike, you're going out to Las Vegas. You're going to be out there. When is uh, BBD is going to open in Las Vegas? Uh, opening in September, beginning of September. So it's coming up really fast. Um, they're building the place now um, to uh, Ralph's uh, very specific uh, set of instructions. Uh, it's going to be a really cool, uh, cool restaurant too. Um, 200 seats, kind of domed uh, center area. And like Ralph was talking about, uh, there's going to be a really, really unique sort of uh, hallway that you go through to get in there. It's like a, uh, an art gallery with uh, friends of, uh, of Ralph's, uh, kind of like abstract sort of, uh, of art. Uh, and at the end of that hallway is going to be uh, the butcher room on full display. So you'll, you'll walk to the end of the hallway and there'll just be, you know, cattle hanging basically from the window. So you mean I can just walk by and they'll be, give me chicharrones as I go by? <laughs> yeah. That's what I want, man. Ralph, chicharrones as I walk to the bar, you know? That's All a right. great idea. He knows. You know what? I kind of like that idea. I wish for a little basket at the opening door of chicharron people just to grab. Thank you, Ralph. <laughs> now that's worth coming out. I don't gamble, but I gamble. All right. So uh, New York City, coming up, uh, New York City Brewer's Choice is back. That'll be our event July 18th. It's in Brooklyn this year. It's going to be a little different, more food, uh, not as many brewers, 
and we're working with Union Beer. So just check it out, New York City Brewers Choice. Dot com and big thanks to everybody you guys really uh, appreciate that you guys are here real uh, industry leaders again uh, big thanks to Yvonne from Bells Joe Turco Sloop uh, Chris and Joe DeChico from DeChico's Market and Mike Amity from uh, Beauty is Las Vegas you guys uh, really rock it out I'm so proud of the growth that's everyone gone through and the craft beer scene in New York and uh, now branching out so thank you so much thanks for joining me on the heritage radio network i'm jimmy carboni more news coming up jimmy's 43 as many of you know is closed but we're gonna have some uh, summer uh, outdoor pop-up venue coming up we'll be announcing that next week thanks to our producer justin kennedy and our engineer david tattashore thanks for listening we'll catch you next time on beer sessions radio all right <laughs> Thanks for listening to Heritage Radio Network, food radio supported by you. For our freshest content and to hear about exclusive events, subscribe to our newsletter. Enter your email at the bottom of our website, heritageradionetwork.org. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at heritage underscore radio. Heritage Radio Network is a nonprofit organization driving conversations to make the world a better, fairer, more delicious place. And we couldn't do it without support from listeners like you. Want to be a part of the food world's most innovative community? Rate the shows you like, tell your friends, and please join our community by becoming a member. Just click on the beating heart at the top right of our homepage. Thanks for listening.